I guess we should discuss what is telemedicine because that's a, a big question now in the landscape where there are so many definitions floating around. I want us to all be on the same page about what we actually are considering telemedicine during this discussion. Firstly, there's telehealth. So the term telehealth is now more commonly used as it describes a wide range of diagnoses, management, education, and other related fields of healthcare. These include, but are not limited to, dentistry, counseling, physical and occupational therapy, home health, chronic disease, disaster management, consumer and professional education. So it kind of consumes the entire landscape of leveraging technology to provide healthcare services. Then there's telemedicine. This is often still used when referring to the traditional clinical diagnoses and monitoring that's delivered remotely by technology. There can be many ways that telemedicine can be provided through different modalities, such as live video conferencing, where there is a two-way live interaction via video using Skype and other services. There is asynchronous communication where a patient's medical record outside of the date is submitted electronically for a patient outside of real time. So this could be in terms of how people use a portal where they're asking a question to their doctor and it doesn't have to be in real time. There are other um, examples of this as well, but we, we kind of want to think of it as kind of communication when you're not one-on-one -on -one with the provider in real time. There is remote patient monitoring where a patient's health and medical data are shared for real-time monitoring. This is happening in places like the intensive care units and other different types of places. There is mobile health. So the use of mobile communications devices or apps to support healthcare. Um, this can be used and is popping up all over the place where people are developing ways to care for patients using mobile devices. So, in 1948, the first radiological images were sent via telephone. This was sent across 24 miles or 38.6 kilometers in the metric system in the state of Pennsylvania in the U.S. It was thought to be of a hand. In 1959, the first medical documents were sent via telephone. The University of Nebraska used telemedicine to transmit neurological examinations, which was the first case of health professionals using the telephone to send and receive medical documents across long distances. In the 1960s, telepsychiatry was born. Nebraska's Psychiatry Institute broadcast live television consultations where psychiatrists would interact with their patients even though they weren't in the same room. That's like Zoom in the 1960s. In 1961, the U.S. space program sent animals into space and used remote sensors to monitor their conditions as they left the Earth's atmosphere. This paved the way for remote monitoring as it's commonly used today. In the 1990s, the internet was born, paving the way for the future where we have connectedness in the comfort of our own homes. In 1993, the American Medical Telemedicine Association was founded. This nonprofit organization is designed to promote and expand telehealth technology companies as a way of increasing access to care. In the 2010s, American regulatory bodies invested in the expansion of telehealth services and in 2020, we've all seen how the COVID-19 pandemic has pushed telemedicine into the forefront. There are various ways that patients receive care traditionally. We think of outpatient medicine, where primary care and specialist office, as well as urgent care facilities, see a patient and exchange services and the patient goes back home. We think of the emergency departments, 
which are well suited for emergencies, although sometimes in the US they're overutilized for many reasons, but an important factor is that we don't have universal health care where a significant amount of individuals can have their care managed appropriately elsewhere, so sometimes they seek emergent care. Then there are the inpatient services where patients are managed in the hospital as they require a higher level of care than an outpatient or they need surgical interventions. And then we get to telemedicine. And as you can see here, the market is saturated. This is not even a fifth of the organizations out there. And there are many more. And this definitely does not include the hospital affiliated organizations. So the market is definitely growing and people are taking a look. So we expected a boom eventually, but then COVID hit. We all know this image, and COVID has not only changed the state of the planet, but it's also changed the landscape of telemedicine as we know it.